What was the disciples' response when they saw the temple? They were uh, amazed. Yeah. Who built the temple? This uh, temple. This temple uh, is uh, Herod the Great. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, you know, this uh, temple was masterpiece. At that time, uh, even Romans admired. They didn't want to destroy this temple because uh, it was the uh, well-known architectural great building. So they trying to convert it to the Roman temple. <laughs> they didn't want to burn. Um, it says the stones are huge, how many feet? And then without any glue, without any cement, they put one stone on top of another one. And uh, uh, it was amazing. Uh, what a magnificent building. So when the disciples went from Galilee and saw the temple, wow. This temple was built uh, 516 BC by the, the returned exiles. But it became, you know, it's almost like 500 years wooden structure. I, I don't know. The returned exiles built it. But uh, Herod the Great and Herod family remodeled extensively and he said that 10,000 people worked every day mm -hmm. to build this, uh, remodel this temple. And then when it was destroyed by the Romans, it was not complete, almost complete. But, you know, Herod the Great did a good job. So some people call this third temple, the third temple. The first one built by Solomon, Solomon, second one built by Return Exile. It's the same building, but they call it third one because Herod completely remodeled. But now it's gone, you know. Question two. What was Jesus' view of the temple? Do you see all these great buildings? Replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left off in another. Everyone will be thrown down. Wow. Just seeing the future of this magnificent building. <laughs> this uh, destruction. Mm -hmm. The uh, temple will be destroyed. Not a single stone will be, you know, on top of another one. Everything will be thrown down. It was burned by the Romans. And uh, it was totally burned. Cannot see even the sight. So at present time, they really don't know the temple site. Totally destroyed. So Jesus said, is it beautiful? It's going to be destroyed, completely destroyed. Question three. Who came to Jesus to ask Father? Um, I guess it was uh, Andrew. Peter, Peter, James, John, John and Andrew. Uh -huh. uh, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives was uh, uh, east side, temple east side, a little hill, Mount of Olives. So when Jesus was sitting, Peter, James, John, usually um, Peter, James, John, hmm. three of them, but this time, Andrew was showing added. So there are some speculation. Why Andrew added? We don't know, but 
maybe this was really serious and did Andrew had to join. Uh, question four. What did they ask Jesus? Tell us when will these things happen? And what will be a sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? So, they ask Jesus two questions. When? Two questions. When? Temple will be destroyed. When a destruction of temple? What's the second question? The sign before. Signs of what? The fulfillment of destruction. So signs of temple destruction, you mean? Can be temple destruction. Well, they are basically asking temple destruction. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered in the further way. So Jesus answered in this uh, whole chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, all these disasters, and then Jerusalem temple destruction, and then the end of uh, Jesus' mm -hmm. second coming. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jesus' answer was. By Gospel Mark, it's hard to tell. The second question is not clear. But when you look at Gospel Matthew, same. Uh, Gospel Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Can you see? Matthew 24, verse 3. Then their question is very clear. 24, verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Right. So this is very clear, right? Mm -hmm. Second coming. Jesus is second coming. Signs of, they ask Signs of Jesus' second coming mm -hmm. and signs of the end, mm -hmm. the end of the ages. So they asked, when temple will be destroyed, when this is going to happen, and then signs of Jesus' second coming and the end of this world, the end of the age. That was their question. Okay. Uh, question five. What was in their minds when they asked these questions? Maybe they want to prepare. Um, mm -hmm. There's a second coming. Mm -hmm. and And what was the thing? You know, they have a lot of actually thought, probably, for security of their positions and then welfare. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. Um. What's in their mind? In the disciples mind the destruction of the temple this is too long <laughs> Temple destruction. Temple is very, very, very important to Jewish people. In their 
all the, it is the center is their soul their existence their whole purpose temple is destroyed and then the core of a Jewish people is gone there you know Australia. yeah it is a whole it's a whole their life so uh, it's beyond imagination but Jesus said it's going to be destroyed what the also at that time, in their mind, when the temple is destroyed, this is the same thing. The end come. It's that temple destruction means the end of this world. Because as long as God lives, temple stays, stays on. When temple is destroyed means the end of the world, you know. So the disciples, when they ask Jesus, uh, when? That means when temple is destroyed, it also is the end. So then, when temple is destroyed, what is to come? What do they expect? New kingdom. <laughs> mm, correct all. New kingdom, kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Then they will be one of the right side and right and left. Right and left. Right. They're gonna sit and reign with Jesus. So here comes uh, glory, success. Happiness. So the temple destruction is shocking news to the disciples, but also they see this kingdom of God after that, after that, glory, success, happiness, forever is soon following. Uh, our in our generation, how the people think, how how people think that uh, accept Jesus, accept Jesus, and what's the next blessing comes? Blessing. Blessing and success, then the end. Jesus' the second coming. We just wait. Jesus' the second coming. We will live happily forever uh, in the kingdom of God. Now, that's what disciples thought, okay? Disciples thought. And this is, this is what disciples thought and this is nowadays Christians think Christians think a reality reality of the, the disciples was temple destroyed temple was destroyed in AD 70 it was destroyed but did the end come? no no 300 years severe persecution of Christians. Christians lost their property, they ran away, they were put in jail, they were, you know, uh, given to uh, lions, animals. 300 years severe persecution and still the end is not is yet to come. So, how is their idea, the disciples' idea? Really wrong. <laughs> really wrong. The idea is really wrong. Jesus has to correct the idea, wrong thinking. 
because they are facing 300 years severe, severe persecution. And that the end is still not yet here. How about our, our generation Christians? Is it true we accept Jesus and expect the blessing, success, and then all we have to do is when Jesus comes back, we will live forever. Is it true? We gotta check this idea. No. Then we need to wake up whether this is true. We need to wake up. Okay, questions and um and you guys see. Next question. What shall be the proper what shall be the proper answer? Um, when the disciples asked when they asked Jesus when it's going to happen. So then what's the proper answer? When? This is uh, AD 70, AD 70, um, like a, about 40 years later on from that time. Yeah, Jesus can say after 40 years, but Jesus didn't say that. Next question. He just answered from verse 5 to 37 to their questions. But we will study today only 13 today. Eight verses today. Right? Mm -hmm. What is the world like? World like uh, where we live in? What should we do face in this? Jesus didn't say after 40 years, but he began to say something else. What did the verse 5 of Jesus say? Watch out then, no one deceives you. Watch out! And no one deceives you. Verse 6. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. Many. Many will come in Jesus' name, or I am the Savior, I am the Father from heaven. I am the son of, son of God. Many will come and deceive you. Many antichrist. Okay. And then verse 22. 22? Yeah. 22. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. Okay. False Christ and then false prophets. And they do miracles. They perform miracles. That their goal is target is target to uh, deceive the elect. Elect to deceive. 
All these are deception. Deceive. Deceive. All this deceive. All this deceive. So, how are the difference between false Christ, false prophets? Anyway, I, I saw one of the reference book, false prophet is false doctrine, include false doctrine. Like a twist the gospel, twist the gospel, you know. <laughs> like a um, medieval period, the crusade, Christian crusade. They say, you, you join crusade by all your sins are forgiven. That kind of false doctrine. Then they said, uh, Jesus failed to save the humankind so that I came. All this false doctrine. So, the world we live, the disciples live, Jesus said, we're going to live in this kind of world. False Christ, cult, False Christ, false prophets are really growing, full of They do miracles. They target true Christians. That's where we are going to live in such a world. So what should we do? What should we do in, in such a world? Go to the uh, desert island, deserted <laughs> island. Live in an island by yourself? <laughs> or desert. Or the <laughs> desert. <laughs> but Jesus didn't say go to the desert. What did he say? Verse 5. Verse 5? Yeah. Watch out. Watch out. No one deceives you. I'm 23, so mm. be on your guard. Okay. Watch out. Be on your guard. Don't be deceived. Watch out. Don't be deceived. It's so easy to be deceived in the Christian world. It's so easy. So we have to discern, we have to have a discernment. I won't. I, when I was a high school uh, freshman, I went to, um, you know, this uh, false religion. I didn't know because I was just a high school girl. Only I heard this is cult. I heard the voice. That's why I escaped. I uh, came out of there. Yeah, we have to have discernment. So, we have to have a discernment. How can we um, equip ourselves to have a discernment? To see this is false, this is true. You are false Christ. You are false prophet. How can we say that? How can we have that kind of discernment? Bible study. Okay. You have to study the Bible. You have to know the word of God. I mean, everything is written in the Bible, and people don't study, 
and they are easily deceived. Man, every once in a while, Christian pastors say, the, the end is coming uh, December, December 20 something at 10 o'clock. Bible says, no one knows. Even the angel in the heaven do not know. Son of man doesn't know. Only God knows. So why do those people say, but when somebody says, the, uh, this, this day is the last day, oh, people go there, follow there. And then churches, they do not say that. It looks like a foolish, stupid, right? But why they follow that kind of uh, false prophets? But they didn't study the Bible. It's written. Even in Gospel Mark chapter 13, it is written. No one knows the time except the Father. So we have to study the Bible. You know, I go to church 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, don't study the Bible. They are so easy target to be deceived. So we have to study the Bible. What else? We can have a uh, discernment. Uh, read a good book. Okay. Read the good books. Bibles and good books. And we have to pray, 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 because uh, so easy to be deceived. Jesus said, "It's so easy to be deceived." It, we have to have a spiritual discernment, and you know, we really have to sometimes. Only through prayer, you you really feel something is wrong. Something is wrong. You can feel that. You can say that. So if you don't pray, you, you cannot have that kind of a discernment. Also, we have we studied last time. You really have to check what they do they teach about Jesus, which is a Jesus identity. Jesus' identity. He is 100% man, 100% God. When they twist that one, you know something is wrong. You know. So, this is not all. And I just think about it, you know. But uh, we have to be spiritually alert, awake. We have to able to discern. So my question is, I, I uh, say, do you believe Jesus as the only Savior from heaven? That clarifies, the answer clarifies. But this one, individual responsibility, you know, individually. So when people don't have a discernment, they follow false Christ, false prophet. It's, it's hard. It's hard to make them understand. Yeah, because they already brainwashed. So we live in such a world, he just want us. Watch out, because we are going to live in this kind of world. That's the first thing Jesus said. Um, question, next question, question eight. What else happens and is going to happen in this world? What should we do facing this? Seven, eight. <clears throat> when you hear of words and rumors of war, do not be alarmed. 
such things must happen, but the end is still still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. So um, all the terrible, tragic gonna happen, but this is a. Uh, a sign of a new beginning. Yeah. When there is war, when America supposed, I mean, just if America is, you know, war, American soldiers go abroad. But if there is war in American land, how do you think we would feel? Scared. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to be scared. Fear. Fear. Out of fear, when we have a fear, we lose discernment. When the President Bush decided to have a war against the Iraq, I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I was imagining things like a, a Korean War. So I bought a lot of rice, a lot, <laughs> lot of dry beans. Why are you scratching your head? Uh, all of a sudden it's... <laughs> I bought a lot of dry beans and I bought a lot of powder water. I filled that space with the... After 9 or 9? Yeah, yeah. Well, when they decided to go to war against mm -hmm. the Iraq. Mm -hmm. And so I filled the powder water, all that space. Because, you know, I thought... If I have water, rice, pea, I can survive. Yeah. <laughs> but I could consume the rice, but <laughs> pea, I couldn't eat all those, the lima bean, the cheap, you know, like a 10 cents per pound bean, I couldn't <laughs> eat it. I have to, I had to throw away after so many years, you know. The water is all expired, mm -hmm. so I threw away all the water. It's out of fear, that's what I did. <laughs> so, when we see wars and rumors of wars, we have a fear. So, what did the teachers say when we see wars? To not be alarmed. To not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. Don't do that as I did. Come. How about the natural disasters? Like the earthquake and famine. Famine means drought. Earthquake, uh, drought, and famine. These are the beginning of first things. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have a fear, fear, and then we will go through the hardships. We expect the hardships. No more all you can eat, but we will have to, you know, have a soup instead of a rice and uh, two meals a day instead of three meals. I mean, all over the world, there are so many people who can eat only one, one meal a day or two meals a day because of uh, uh, famine and hardships. We expect hardships. In this situation, Jesus said, do not be alarmed. Don't be trapped by fear. Don't be alarmed. Why? What's the reason we're not going to be alarmed? The World War Three. The World War Three. I don't know if there is a, such a one or not. We had World War One, World War Two, World War Three. Will not end the world. 
when, when there was uh, the Russia and America had uh, atomic bombs, there were a period that uh, Russia sent the atomic bomb to Cuba, trying to send it. And then there was a crisis, right? We were all trembling at that time. It's going to be, you know, a war with the atomic bombs, you know. But the world will not be destroyed by war or natural disaster or anything. How the world will end? By sin. By Jesus' second coming. By Jesus' second coming. Oh, Jesus. Jesus coming. The world will end by Jesus coming. Not World War Three. not these things, these things, no. These things will not end the world. The world will end by Jesus' second coming. So, we don't have to be alarmed when there is war or rumors of war or natural disaster. Jesus say, come, don't be afraid, don't be alarmed. Because this thing will not end the world. And Jesus' second coming will end the world. But we expect hardships <coughs> in this situation. Uh, next question. What is the characteristic of birth pain? <laughs> What's the characteristic of a birth pain? Can answer. Yeah, I cannot answer. <laughs> I mm. did <laughs> So you, you have no experience of a birth pain? Right, but after surgery, after so the gave birth, I a little bit, I had a hard time. No, that's the surgical pain. Right. So, so, it's not the birth, birth pain. pain. Birth pain is, is uh, gradually intensified. And then pain comes every 15 minutes, then it goes every 10 minutes, and then it comes every five minutes, and then sometimes a forced labor. Like a, my daughter had a pain, so she went to the emergency room. And then when she arrived at the hospital, no, no pain. So she came back home. Next day she went. And five minutes and it goes to three minutes and like it goes two minutes and then it is gradually pain intensified pain is going gradually intensified so what is just saying with the birth pain. Why are you trying to say? So it's gonna be more worse. Yeah, yeah. The world is going to be like a birth pain. It's going to be getting more and more intensified. Trouble, trouble. Hardships will be troubles. Hardships. Wars. Persecutions. The world we live is going to be like this, more more intensified.
This is the world we live. Can we survive as we ask peace, peace, peace in the mind? How can we have a peace, 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 peace in such a world? Okay, next question. What degree of persecution will the believers face um, the most? The, um, we say nine. Okay, let's say verse nine. Book, the, I said the degree of persecution. Verse nine, what degree of persecution? Believers will face. You will be handed over to the local council and flood in the synagogue on the account on account of me you will stand before governors and kings as witness says to them. So they will have a physical flogging. Yeah. Torture. Torture and in the in our terms, tortures, you know. The missionary Ma Kong, he went to the uh, China mission, right? It's, uh, because his uh, friend asked him, please go, go. But his friend was a missionary in uh, China. He was arrested and tortured. Many Korean missionaries in China, tortured in the jail. So, okay, and then verse 10, okay, this one, skip. Verse 11, how about that? Verse 11 <clears throat> is saying, uh, whenever you are arrested, and you're brought to trial. You do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you. So arrested and brought to trial. Okay. So the believers will be arrested and tried in the court. You know why? Because many countries, it's illegal to carry the Bible, illegal to preach the gospel. So illegal to evangelize. That's why uh, they are arrested and tried. How about <clears throat> verse 12? Verse 12, brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Mm -hmm. So all so that when the Christians, Christians, all family member will kill. In some countries, uh, one of the family convert to Christianity, all family member will kill them and they hand over. So they're facing death. Jesus said this. The verse 12, they will be hated. They will be hated. I understand this very well, but hated. Because so when I was atheist, I really hated the Christians. I, when I look at Christians, I so hate them. Because you know, so hypocritic. That's why I hated them. Um, Jesus said, believer, you're going to face this one. So, degree, degree of persecution is imprisonment, torturing, death, and hated. 
this you just mentioned. Do we face, do we have these problems? <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. I have every day. My yeah. students hate me. Okay, you have this one. Yeah, because I, I, you have this one. I teach math. <laughs> and also I fight to teach. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, we are pretty safe. We are pretty safe, you know. But when we go abroad, really trying to preach the gospel, we base this one, you know. And the missionary, uh, William, he said four times the police tried to arrest him and uh, he was hiding. And then uh, one time he was hiding for one year. He was hiding. And then in, in China, our missionaries, they were having a Bible study and police was coming. So he jumped out of the window to run away. So we are safe because we didn't go that kind of place. But still today, year 2014 is the year the Christians were killed, persecuted, the most uh, compared to other 2,000 years, the most killed. Mm -hmm. So it's still. So um, <clears throat> next question. What should we do facing persecution? What should we do when we face this persecution? Jesus says, I, I pick three, three points. You must be on your guard. Number nine, verse nine. Mm -hmm. and oh, verse one more, in verse nine, the last one. Verse nine, last sentence. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. Witnesses. They are persecuted. Use this opportunity as a witness to the gospel. This is the opportunity to witness my gospel. This is the opportunity. My gospel is more precious than my life, more precious than my property. We have been saying that in our world, but in the real situation, real situation, when we are persecuted, it is the opportunity to truly show, testify. We become a witness of, to the gospel. You know, I saw the, the Korean missionaries went to Pakistan or Afghanistan, and then uh, one man, then they were arrested him. The terrorist, Arab terrorists arrested him, and then uh, they brought him out to kill him. And then, then I saw in uh, American TV, he was uh, screaming in terror. He is uh, screaming in Korean. He said, uh, I don't want to die. He was uh, screaming like that, but they killed him anyway. So, you know, that was the opportunity to testify Jesus. To testify Jesus. And then, shout. Jesus will come back, judge the living and the dead. Jesus is the Son of God. Why he couldn't shout one word? 
to pierce the terrorist. So when we are persecuted, we are, we are in this situation, this is the golden opportunity to testify. Gospel is more precious than my life. That's what first Christian did. First Christians, you know, they were eaten by lions. Uh, they all lost their land, and houses, and job, and everything. But still, they didn't deny. You know the uh, nine day, seven day, nine day queen in England. She was offered. You accept the Catholic faith, then you won't die. But she chose to die. She chose. She defended her faith. So <clears throat> we have to know when we are persecuted, when any of this situation we are in, it is the golden opportunity to show witness, to be a witness to the gospel. How about verse 11? Do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We have to know Holy Spirit helps them. Helps believers to testify. So, I said, don't try to pre-meditate. Don't try to figure out what can I say or all, all this, you know. As a, at that moment, Holy Spirit will speak through you. It's not us who speak. Holy Spirit speak through you. When uh, my eldest sister Last weekend, she said that uh, all my life I refused to God, you know. How can I now come ask God for help? I've been saying, trying to persuade her, but at the moment I got idea and I told her and then she understood. And sometimes, wow, did I say that, you know? Well, how can I say that? Because the Holy Spirit will speak through that person. So don't worry. Jesus said, don't worry what to say. Don't premeditate. Just face it. Then the Holy Spirit will speak through you. We are not alone. Okay. Verse 13. When we are hated, what we should remember? He who Stand upon to the end will be saved. Uh -huh. He said, All men will hate you. Why? Yes. Because of me. Because of Jesus. The world hated Jesus. That's why we are hated. Because of Jesus. The world hated Jesus. That's why they hate Christians. So, this is Jesus helps us how we become not a victim, but a winner during uh, persecution. We are the witness. It's the chance of, to testify. Holy Spirit is with me, helps me. Holy Spirit speaks through me and people hate me not because me but because of Jesus in me. Jesus gives us three teaching so we can overcome. We come out not as a victim but as a victor. Jesus teaches how we go through persecution. Next question. So if we don't have this one, 
we will be like the man I saw in the TV, you know, terrified, crying. Please don't kill me, don't kill me like that. But we are, Jesus teaches us how to face persecution. Um, question 13. 12? 12? Why is verse 10 mentioned in the middle of the middle of the persecution? Or verse 10. Verse 10 saying, And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. So, um, I guess first it should go everybody to everybody, then fairly, and then whoever listen. And they will, they will choose, accept Jesus as a savior or refuse Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's why Jesus is waiting when it all the way reached to the end of the uh, spread to the all the world. You know, um, I was just curious to me why that verse ten was inserted in the middle of the persecution, you know. And then through persecution, the gospel was powerfully spread. 300 years of severe persecution, the gospel conquered the world. Usually we think, I'm, I'm in a hearing frequently, uh, we want to be witness to Jesus. Okay, after I believed in God, God gave me this success, God gave me this success, God gave me this success, and trying to testify, you know, gospel that way. But in today's words, gospel is testified through persecution. Because one uh, in the early Christian, he, he was the like a leader of the church, and the, the Romans, you know, it respected him. So if you deny Jesus, I'll let you live. And he answered, "All my life." Jesus never denied me. How can I deny Jesus? So his, even though he died, his confession spread all over the world. Jesus is more precious than his own life because so gospel was powerfully preached through the period of persecution. Now, like a next question. Why didn't Jesus tell the time or teach this? Okay, Jesus didn't say AD 70, the temple will be destroyed. This is the time. But Jesus didn't say that. Later on, this is a temple destruction. The end of the world is no one knows. No one knows, you know. So why didn't Jesus answer this question, you know, to your question like this? But Jesus answered them. What we studied today. Not only to Jesus, like disciples mm -hmm. who have questioned to Jesus, but to all who, who believe in Jesus' name, we're going to have the same go through this period and then Jesus wants us to know how to be God, how to be. Mm. Thank you. Right answer. 
Jesus taught them how to base it, how to go through, how to go through fire, water, hunger, persecution, how to go through. Jesus taught the way how we can go through. It's not, it's not success, riches, prosperity waiting for disciples. It is not. 300 severe persecution were waiting for them. Jesus taught them how to go through that. How to overcome. How to overcome. How to stand firm. Not crying, not complaining, not blaming, but Jesus taught the way how we can be a winner. So, it's not, it's not outside the condition. The victory is in our heart, in our heart, our attitude. If there is war, do not be alarmed. If there is famine, do not be afraid. If there is a false doctrine, false teacher, don't be deceived, figure it out. We have to grow in discernment. That's why it is so necessary to study in a seminary. I think a seminary study helped me a lot to figure out. You know. So it, it doesn't matter outside the condition. Any situation we face, the solution is in my own heart, not outside. It's the inside, inside in my own heart. We, Jesus teaches how to go through, how to overcome, how to stand firm. Then, then the end will come. Then the end. They don't have to know what time. We just, you overcome this one, you overcome that one, you overcome that one. Then the end will come. So Jesus taught how to go through. So in any situation they face, they know what to do. That's what Jesus' lesson toward the, uh, the end. Okay, like a, there's a somebody, um, What should we do when we have uh, some questionable practice of a church or pastor or what should we do? Don't be deceived. You know, it, it's all now. It's a one. We have to be alone. We have to have it alone. Hundreds of people go there, but you shouldn't go there. Don't be deceived. And then how about the wars and natural disasters? What did Jesus say? Do not be alarmed. To the persecution, use that to testify your faith. As, and then expect the help from the Holy Spirit. 
Okay. Question, the last question. Who can stand firm to the end? Who, um... Who can stand firm to the end? Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Their kind of confidence <laughs> came from. <laughs> because I believe in Jesus Christ. I have a faith in Him. So be. But uh, that was not in. Uh, I no, didn't I intend. I didn't intend that answer. Oh, so oh, give no me words. some uh, another answer. <laughs> Those who endure persecution and all the disaster and not losing their faith. Mm -hmm. but holding hope uh, for Jesus' second coming. Yeah. I mean, who can stand firm? Prosperity, you know, believe Jesus and be blessed, can, cannot go through. That kind of faith cannot go through. Actually, it's... Like Jesus mentioned these things, we need to acknowledge them before He will come. Right. We need yeah. to, like uh, um, Jesus said, uh, the words and then lots of famine and then disaster will come. So we mm -hmm. need to, like uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the word is fulfilled, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. just uh, and then be ready. Mm -hmm. It will happen. And then, so we need to be around, and we need to guard, we be guarded by the, mm -hmm. the words of God, and mm -hmm. then prayer. So, mm -hmm. also we can, you know, help people who is in this week. So, we can also you know, lead them to in Jesus' way. Right. So, yeah. Bible study. So also we the the. So I think like uh, no, we have to listen carefully what the Holy Spirit says mm -hmm. to us. Every day we need to try to listen to the Holy Spirit. So. You know, uh, like a prosperity, prosperity gospel, no way, with a, this kind of a attitude, no way they can stand firm to the end. <laughs> but, like a Judah Iscariot, Even they they cannot come to church to the you know two or three no, no. Day, three years. I, you know, when I uh, listen to Christian radio, I realized a lot of uh, teaching sermons want peace, peace. Peace in my mind, peace at work, peace in, you know, all oh, peace, peace. When I was listening, I said, the world is not a peaceful place. No way! Seeking peace. <laughs> no way! They can stand firm to the end. Really. How can I mean, they, they went to Bible study, arrested, put in a jail, and tortured? How can they have peace in the mind? No way. The world, Jesus said, is, is like a labor pain, birth pain. The world is getting worse and worse and worse. And then a lot of deceptions. We not only survive, we have to be a winner. And this is what Jesus teaches us. How we can go through. We have to know there is the deceivers, false prophet, false churches, false ministers, false, 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 false missionaries, de deceivers. There is a wars, famines, Financial hardships, persecutions. How 
Jesus teaches how we overcome and stand firm to the end. Anyone who stands firm to the end will be saved. That's what Jesus said. Okay. Today's Bible study is up to here.